What's going on? We're talking Raider football, and we are back, guys. Dan the Man is back talking Raider football and all the goodness that might happen this season because it honestly, I think all of us Raider fans are thinking this is going to either going to be a very good season, it's all going to be optimistic, like all our you know worries are just going to be washed away, and the Raiders are actually going to make some noise this season, or it's going to be a complete failure, which has all the elements to go either way. 50-50, baby. 50-50. You have uh, first time, well, Antonio Pierce has coached us uh, those last, what, five games last season, taking over from the god-awful Josh McDaniels. And believe me, guys, boy, the Josh McDaniels set us back so much. Did Mark Davis set us back so far? Yeah, it was it was it was very hard to watch. It was very hard to watch the Raiders play last season. But Antonio Pierce, man, uh, the crew, the the whole uh, roster wanted him back. Uh, it was a whole like Rich uh, Basaccia kind of situation. Before then, I didn't think Rich. I didn't want Rich to be the coach because I thought he would be. You know, we need a coach that's gonna know how to beat the Andy Reeds, you know, in our division and all these other coaches to win the Super Bowl. But looking back now and just seeing how well we play with a player's coach, I think, I guess this, I, I guess, I believe this is the right move. This is the right route we should go. So Antonio Pierce is saying all the good things that we want to hear as Raider fans. Uh, just really hearkening back to Oakland days, even Los Angeles days, and now Vegas days ahead of us so he's saying all the right things but a lot of this talk has we have to be able to pr produce winning seasons we have to be able to win to get back to excellency right <laughs> so i just wanted to talk about week one your boy will be at the game at sofi i have now made this a tradition to go watch the raiders versus chargers at sofi Sadly, the three times I have gone there, the three times we have lost, and it's kind of crazy. We won't, we didn't lose by a lot, like the ass whooping we gave the Chargers last year. We lost by a score. We literally lost by a score. A final drive. Derek Carr couldn't do it, and we, we always we lost. Man, Aiden O'Connell couldn't do it when he. That was his uh, what, first start last year against the Chargers. So I've seen I've seen these last three games of charge it go Chargers way and I'm not gonna sit here as of course a Raider talk a Raider fan and say that Chargers still don't are this is gonna be easy win <laughs> because it's not there's so many questions going into week one I think the main question is of course gonna be QB can Minshew do it Antonio Pierce is he gonna be able to Make the right calls, make the right timeouts. How is he going to manage the flow of the game? Luke Getze is a big one. How is this offense going to be with this new coordinator coming from the Bears? Uh, and the other thing is also, uh, well, two more things. The defense. A lot of talk saying this defense is like a top 10, top 5 the Raiders defense is going to be destroying teams this year, keeping our team in games. Is that the case? I've heard this talk before. I like what's on paper, but what's on paper doesn't result on the field sometimes. So is the Raiders defense the real deal? Uh, I'm not really kind of focused. Uh, Preseason's a great little you know look up at everything and who wants to fight for the team. Uh, you had also uh, you had Amari what, Gaynor, really like that guy, really a killer coming after the run. But preseason is preseason. We went undefeated in preseason. That doesn't translate to the season, but it does give you a kind of a good kind of look of what the players, well, if kind of seeing what the backups and everything and all that uh, another thing too the last but not least looking into this week one hopefully victory is in the season it all boils down to the run game as well so let's dive right into it uh chargers versus raiders i'm gonna let you guys know right now the chargers still have the advantage like i just said i've been to three of these games at sofi even though we've only lost by uh touchdown a couple points 
we've still lost. There is no medal. There is no record stating whether we lost by a little or by a lot. It's a loss is a loss. So the Chargers still have our number at their home stadium, which is not really their home stadium, which is insane because when you go to a game like that, it is all blacked out. It is all Raiders. But you could also say the same for Allegiant Stadium, which I will be actually at my first game watching them uh, this year against Kansas City. Look, look out for a video right there. But with the Chargers and the Raiders, the, the Chargers still have beaten us. The first, it's usually one and one. We usually lose by them the first game and then we win the second game. I want that to turn around. I want us to actually uh, just make a Kansas City is the big dog in the division, but I want us to go at least undefeated with the Chargers and the Broncos. So the Chargers have lost weapons on offense. They So it makes the defense, this is where it's going to, not necessarily the defensive line, even though Harbaugh did get uh, a lot of offensive linemen to help with a lot of this pass rush and everything. But I think what we got to really look at and what every Raider fan knows is what we got to look at is the coverage, the coverage, the coverage, the coverage, a lot of blown assignments, a lot of the over the top big plays that are always happening with the Raiders. It doesn't matter if you're in Oakland, it doesn't matter if you're in Los Angeles, it doesn't matter if you're in Vegas. The Raiders seem to always allow a fourth and 26 to become a first down undisciplined uh, penalties. This needs to change this season. The coverage, not the defensive line, because I think the defensive line and even the linebackers with Spillane are going to be solid. The coverage, yes, we have Jack Jones, we have Nate Hobbs, we have Trayvon, we have Bennett, but I need to see dogs in these guys. I need to see not only the defensive line putting pressure to the quarterback, which I believe they will. I, I, I have no doubt about that. I don't. I have no doubts with Kuntz, with Max Crosby, with our new uh, signed DT or signed uh, player Wilkinson for coming from Miami. I'm looking at the coverage. The coverage has to be solid this season. There has to be no blown assignments. The big plays are going to happen. It's not like a defensive team, even the best defensive teams like the Ravens back in the day, Chicago, whatever. You know, uh, you could even say the Steelers. They would not, they still allowed big plays. That's going to happen in season. But the big plays, and we need to get off the field. We need to get off the field by not allowing the big plays to happen at the most critical situation. Uh, Kansas City is a game that you're going to have to look at and say, you got Xavier Worthy with speed. You also have uh, uh, Rashid Rice later on down the road. These are guys that can make big plays. And the Raiders, uh, the first test is going to be Chargers. And this is a good little test before we get into more during down the, round, uh, down the road season. So the coverage of the defense is what I'm looking at while the defensive line and the linebackers, not so much because I think they're going to put in work. Uh, especially Diablo, man. Diablo is such, I love Diablo. He's such a fan favorite. Uh, he's doing work. He might not be a superstar, but he's a guy we need to make it to the playoffs. So let's talk about quarterback here. Well, um, going back with the Chargers and the Raiders and how this can, might go down, kind of seeing, you know, what, what might happen. You know, the Chargers still have Bosa. The Chargers still have Mac, And we all know that Mac and Bosa, I believe they're playing in week one. I think Bosa was a little banged up. Herbert was a little bit banged up, but he'll be playing as well. Mac is getting a little bit older, but he could still, you know, rush. I think he had six sacks on us. Uh, was it last year or a couple years back? I, think, I believe it was last year in the first game. Oh, yeah, it was last year in the first game uh, with Aiden O'Connell. But, you know, it's kind of hard when Aiden's first start and, you know, he's a rookie. So with Chargers uh, defense, they're, uh, it's not a very strong defense. So Minshew should be able to m just make really uh, big plays when he can. He sh I'm hoping that he protects the ball. I'm very confident with Minshew. A lot of people are also Raiders, are, uh, Raider Nation. I, I get it. It's not the quarterback situation we wanted. We tried to get a quarterback in the draft. We've, uh, I, I'm sure the uh, general manager has tried to go for a lot of free agencies here. But I also think Antonio Pierce believes that, hey, we got to fight with these guys that we got right now. It is what it is. So uh, Minshew over Aiden O'Connell. I do like O'Connell, but it is true where he doesn't have... 
great uh, ability to run out of the pocket. And I know he's a pocket passer, which I absolutely love. Aiden O'Connell is a very, he could be so good, but then he may, I think he overthinks uh, himself while Minshew really kind of goes with it. He's uh, really like a, I want to say a Brett Farr, but he's a guns, gun slinger. You know, he's, he's shooting to win. He's shooting to, he's making the bet, he's placing his bet, and he's seeing if he's going to win. With Minshew, the great uh, upside of this is that he is able to move out of the pocket. He is able to pick up yards, pick up a first down if we need to, or even run it into the end zone. The problem with Minshew is the turnovers, of course, and sometimes he's not as accurate as he needs to be. Uh, Colts, I believe, coach at the time, I don't know if it's a new coach, but the Colts coach, when he was playing with the Colts really kind of blamed the one pass to when he was dropping it down to his running back to get the first down and the running back didn't catch the ball and that ended the season. I don't really put that on Minshew so much because it wasn't a bad ball, but Minshew does have issues of really kind of accuracy, right? Uh, one of the things that Devontae Adams was absolutely pissed about last year was uh, Gar Garoppolo and the accuracy of his quarterbacks and really not hitting it right there on the chest like, you know, Aaron Rodgers or something like that. So I'm not very worried about the, uh, not necessarily the roster we have on offense. So we have talent, man. You have Devontae Adams. Uh, Brock Byers is going to be amazing. I think if he's healthy, you have also Jacoby Myers, which is my MVP of last season. I hope he um, gets the rock again a lot this season. He's just such a, he's kind of Hunter Renfro-ish where he's a safety blanket as well. But then you also have Trey Tucker, who is going to be a sleeper, man. If they're able to really put him in there and our, that speed, I know a lot of people are going to say, like, you know, we miss Henry Ruggs because of the speed, the the take the top off where defenses have to worry about that. Trey Tucker is that kind of guy. So uh, and a lot of camp preseason, he's looked really, really sharp. So I think Trey Tucker might be a sleeper. So the but all these weapons is such a great thing to have. And I do like Antonio Pierce and the general manager, uh, Tom, uh, mindset of at least, you know, if we don't have the most capable quarterbacks, we need to have weapons surrounding them. And there really is a lot of weapons on this offense. The offensive line is still a little bit shaky. So going into Chargers versus Raiders, I think that's the one key element right there with our is the offensive line. The offensive line was bad last year. When it came to giving up sacks to Mac, and it's going to be 50-50 uh, uh, this year. I We got to see how these guys play. We got to see how these guys pass protect. That's why the beauty of having Minshew start week one is his mobility. So that is such a thing to look at, but you really got to really focus on the offensive line and see how they hold up. Uh, and especially the run game, which we'll get into right now, because I think the Raiders season overall... We don't go anywhere. We don't we don't really progress. We don't have a winning season unless we have a, a running game. Unless Zamir White is able to really establish the run and the offensive line is really to establish the run. Uh, a lot of the play calling is going to go through Luke Getze, which I'm a little sh – when I heard of the hiring, I was really, really disappointed of who we got for offensive coordinator. You got to give him a shot, though. Uh, you got to hope that, you know, using his tight, two tight end sets, which we have awesome tight ends, by the way, uh, that he gets this thing going. But he needs to establish a run. And Zamir White has to be the man. I have so much faith in Zamir White. I think Zamir White is going to be a star this season. I think he's going to be a beast. He's going to be like your uh, Nick Chubb. Your, uh, uh, you're, you're really you know, uh, Derek Henry kind of type. Uh, maybe not get the all the accolades, but he's going to really produce and make make us get first downs and keep the defense off the field to give him a rest. Because Zamir White last year, when he took over from Josh Jacobs, was averaging 100 yards per game. He, was, he won the Kansas City game on Christmas Day. The guy was running. The guy hit the was hitting the holes right. He was really tough to get taken down. Uh, the last final run he did sealed the game. It was still a close game with Kansas City and Raiders on Christmas Day. So I really 100%. I put all my chips on this uh, this guy Zamir White. I think he is 
going to be a great replacement from Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, yeah, he did wonderful things for Raider Nation, but now it's time to give this this guy a chance. And I, I see, I really see something in this kid. So if the offensive line could really establish the run, uh, and then also the offensive coordinator could really get the run going. I know Antonio Pierce is going to want to run. He's not going to want to rely too much on the quarterback with Minshew. Uh, the less Minshew kind of, you want to throw, you don't want to be scared to throw. And I, I think Minshew is all about like, you know, like I said, he, he's up for the challenge, but you, if you could establish the run, if you could beat up this uh, this defense, you could wear them down. It just makes it that much easier for play action and also for Minshew to really get uh, go over the top from a Trey Tucker or ha hit a J uh, Jacoby Myers, hit a Devontae Adams, hit his two tight ends, uh, just what uh, Brock, you know. So I, I think Zamir White is the key to the Raiders' success, not only in this week one game, but the whole season as a whole. Uh, another thing, to, yeah, going to Luke Getze, you know, it's the coming from Chicago. Uh, there was rumors of getting Fields and Fields is looking terrible at Steelers. So it's kind of a good thing we didn't pick that guy up, uh, even though he has legs and he could ball out uh, sometimes on certain games and stuff. But Luke Getze is one of the key things that we definitely have to look at because if this he with Antonio Pierce being somewhat of a rookie coach, but him having able to hire a lot of veteran coaches like what was it Marvin Lewis and Tom Coughlin helping him out, I, I think that's a, such a smart move. And Antonio Pierce knowing that you have to address your weakness in order to not only get better but to have your team have faith in you, knowing that he is also. Uh, working hard to get this Raider Nation and Raiders uh, just win baby mentality back, back not only by just saying just win baby, but actually providing these wins to the organization and to the fans. So I, I mad respect for Antonio Pierce. The hiring of Luke Getze kind of has me a little shaken about still because I just don't feel like this this guy tenure with Chicago and with Fields it's just all bad. Can can it be just that? Could it have been just because of Chicago and Fields? Can it be something where, you know, it's coming from uh, kind of like, you know, how Raiders are. They pick up guys that didn't work out in certain other teams, but they bring them to Raider Nation and they give them a second chance. Can this second chance really provide for our organization? That's what I was going to get on to Minshew. Minshew has gone from team to team to team. He's not a bad quarterback. I really like the guy. The guy can ball he can play he can uh he's a weird guy he really reminds me of a old school 70s kind of raider uh you could say ken step uh stabler but i'm gonna say uh plinkett or i'm sorry plunkett i'm gonna say plunkett uh he's he's just really has that he could be that you know he could be a guy who was a bust maybe somewhere else but come to our organization and help us win do i say see a super bowl i hope that's the main goal right i think everybody knows that uh that is the main goal is to win a super bowl so are we gonna i, I want to win a super bowl with uh Minshew. uh does he give us the best chance probably not but it's not only just him that's going to be able to give us that chance it's the whole organization it's luke getsy it's antonio pierce it's the defense it's the defense guys we're, we're, we're worried about the quarterback play and we should be worried about the quarterback play we haven't had a, a really solid quarterback uh, that's taken us all the way since Rich Gannon, you know, but we had uh, Derek Carr, but of course, you know, injury. Well, uh, Derek Carr did was on our team for all those years, uh, but we haven't had a quarterback that has been taken us, that has been consistent in taking us to the playoffs. But the one thing that has been dragging us down all these years since the Super Bowl is the defense. The defense has been horrendous. Horrendous. There is no success unless the defense is up to par. And we're going to see if the defense is up to par this season. And even if the offense is not looking too sharp, if the defense is looking absolutely phenomenal, that gives us a chance next year to fix some of the problems that we have, like the quarterback situation and such and such. The defense has been the problem with the Raiders. That We have not been in the games because the defense and the coverage 
have been horrible. So this is the first time where I feel like this is an Oakland 70s Howie Long. Uh, this is a Los Angeles, you know, uh, Matt Milton. This is a, a, a just a, a savage defense that's ready to go out there and really to fight and really to really lead their team and really kind of put fear on the opposite team, you know. Uh, a Hendrix, you know, uh, uh, really some dogs that are ready to fight. A uh, 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 Zeta, you know, um, a Zeta, a Zeta. These, uh, those type of, you know, guys. I, I want a seventy style Raiders defense. Of course, you can only do so much because of the penalties and stuff. So that's what I really look for is the uh, the defense. And uh, I'm trying to remember what, what I said, the keys to all the other stuff. But when it comes to the Chargers versus Raiders, the elements are, it's right there. I think week one is actually the elements that we need to win in week one is the elements that we need to succeed during the whole season. That's why week one is very, very vital, a very good look of where we're kind of going to go, We're kind of what we're going to see with uh, Minshew, with the offense, with the run game. This is a good test for us because to really show show Raider Nation something different is to win at SoFi because we haven't done that in years. We must win at SoFi against the Chargers. We must take that game one. If we do that, then we have a very promising start. We have a fast start, even though it's just 1-0. and That's better than being 0-1-1. So uh, Raider Nation... What can I say? Uh, the keys to winning against the Chargers is basically the keys to being a great team for the season. All the elements have to click. All the elements have to work. Are we going to go undefeated this season? That's not realistic. What realistically is, we we actually we are able to at least get into the wild card, at least get into the playoffs. Let's get into the playoffs and let's build from there. And once we get into the playoffs, I've always said, you know, when we had Raiders versus Bengals, uh, Carr missing that last drive, getting screwed over again, what it is, what it is. But uh, Carr with that last drive and not able to punch it in to what was it? It was going to tie the game, I believe. Raiders, when they're in the playoffs, they're they're a wild card, man. They're truly a wild card. You never know. The possibilities are are there they're able to for some reason the Raiders are able to elevate from being mediocre in a season to something great and I think if we can just get into the playoffs who knows we just absolutely who knows but it either way it's a win-win it gives us experience it gives us motivation hunger to continue to get better week one is the showcase of that are we going to be better than last season. I think we will. Josh McDaniels really destroyed this team. I want to go back to old school Raider football. I want to, you know, to destroy Justin Herbert. I want to us to really hit him in the mouth like we did last season and give an ass whooping and really kind of, you know, run it back and not a lot of charges not say, hey, you guys kicked our ass because we hated our coach and that was the you know nail in the coffin. Nah, nah, nah. I want that to be legit and give, and give us a dominant win in week one. So Raider Nation, uh, sorry for all the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the names, uh, butchering the names and stuff, you know, when you're spit, spitting in your head and stuff, uh, it, it, you, you, you kind of mess up a little bit here. Uh, I like to do my videos unedited. So what you hear, what you, you know, about basically what I'm talking about at the time of this recording, I don't know who, who might be playing uh, from here on to the actual game, but I love to talk Raiders, man. I love to talk about, you know, what the, what the, kind of look is for the 2024 season and uh, i've always loved my raiders been a raider since a, a little boy i can even i'll put the picture up on this edit to show you that it's it's just me man it's just me rocking the raiders the los angeles raiders gear uh have the los angeles later uh, raiders jacket and stuff so when i go to these games i'm i'm legit like rooting for hoping that the raiders go back to those glory days Go back to the 70s, the 80s, the Raiders when they went to the Super Bowl punching people in the mouth. Like not even a game because the Raiders are winning those Super Bowls dominantly. Except for, of course, Tampa Bay. But I shudder to even talk about Tampa Bay. So, 
Uh, thank you guys for listening on Dan and Make a Dan Sun. If you guys could, you please subscribe and follow me throughout the whole season because I will be talking every week, the Raiders, and I will be there at the game. Have great YouTube shorts for you when I'm over there. Um, till next time, till more Raider talk. How crazy is Nicolas Cage going to be John Madden, right? That's pretty crazy, right? Shout outs to Tom Flores. Uh, sound, shout outs to uh, Raider Rat. Uh, shout outs to all the, the couple of Raider Rats I've met over the years. Really, really great talks. Uh, maybe I'll have a video on that talking about what they had to say about uh, the o good old Oakland days, you know. Um, but thank you guys. I'm Danny Mackey Down Son. Let's get it. Bye-bye.